myself Ankita Tiwari from LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology from ITS department. I'm going to take a session from the subject that is computer vision. The module that we are going to start from today, that is module number six. The module name is motion representation. In that we are going to do the topic as the motion field of the rigid object. First of all, the motion field, then motion parallax with respect to motion field, the optical flow matrix that we have, and the image brightness constant uh, constancy equation that we have for a particular optical flow. So these many things that we are going to do today. So what is dynamic analysis? So we can say that the input to the dynamic scene analysis is the sequence of image frames. That is f of x, y, and t with respect to displacement t taken from the changing world. So frames are usually captured at the fixed time intervals that is t. So here t will represent the tth frame in the sequence and x and y are the special coordinates. So here the uh, graph has been, or we can say the diagram has been depicted here. How an image is being taken in the form of motion. With respect to x and y, it will change gradually towards the value. And how it will change, that value should be in the form of motion. So this is how we are predicting an object is in motion or not. So typical applications that include many of the things that are included in the dynamic scene analysis is the motion detection, first of all. That is, we can say often from a static camera or we can say common in the surveillance system, often preferred on the pixel level only due to the speed constraints. The second uh, application that we have is object localization, focuses attention to a region of interest in the image or we can say data reduction. Also, we can say often only interest points found which are used later to solve the correspondence problem. Motion segmentation. Images are segmented into the region that is corresponding to different moving objects. And they also we have typical application like three dimensional shape from the motion. Means 3D view of an motion. From the object we can capture the image and we can represent that in 3D view. That is also called a structure from motion. Also object tracking, how the object will move and how that object is being tracked with respect to the motion which is created of the object. So we can say a sparse set of features is often tracked. We can say corner points which are being depicted in the motion. Now the problem definition that has been found for the motion field, that is assuming that the scene illumination does not change. And we can say the image changes are due to the relative motion between the scene objects because scene is there, object is there, with respect to scene the object moves and with respect to that the camera will observe. So these are the different parameters that we need to find it out. So there are three possibilities for it. First of all, the stationary camera, the moving object. Then we have moving camera, stationary object. And the third one, moving camera and the moving object. So these are the three forms. Now what is motion field is? So motion field is a 2D representation in the image plane of a, that is we can say 3D motion of point in the scene. We can say typically on the surface of the objects. So to the each point is assigned a velocity vector, that is V, corresponding to the motion it is direction and the velocity magnitude. Now with respect to that, we are having an example as well, how a motion is being captured. We are having an image one, we are having an image two, and we are having a part of motion field. Means from here, the image has been changed to image two. Now the distance between the image one and the image two, the distance, how it moves, so that is what the part of motion is. Because motion means moving from one object position to another position of the same object. So estimating how we are estimating the motion field matching of the blocks first of all the first method that we have matching of the objects that we have that is interpretation needed and we can say a sparse motion field then we have matching of the interest points with what interest we need to find it out the motion of the object so we can say a bit denser motion field we can say a more difficult interpretation we can say problems with the repetitive structures also we have another flow as the optic flow which is basically basically a differential technique that is matching intensities on a pixel level that is exploring the special and the time variations. Ideally a dense motion field is used that is problems for the textualized parts of the images due to the aperture problem. Aperture pro problem we are going to discuss after this. So this is what the thing is optical flow. Now what is black uh, block matching method where so you can say that correlation based tracking is block matching method means with respect to block we are finding particular point and the movement so for a given region in one frame find the corresponding region in the near next frame by finding the maximum correlations score this is the method in a search region now with respect to that the blocks are typically squared and overlap so here as you can see the example we are having a block like structure okay and how it this block this block has been divided into subparts 
Now, with respect to that, the point which is measured, that we need to have it. Okay, that is measured in a particular block divided, and we are taking the center point of it. Now, whenever we want to take the correlation with it with the next block matching, we will be taking with respect to that distance only means one to one, the third of a distance with third value means it will go like one block. Then in the motion in the parallel, another block in the motion the parallel the third block. This is how the black block matching method is being done, and how the, this is how the images is being uh, segmented and the we are getting the matching of it. So the next point that we have is segmentation in video sequences. The background subtraction, the first segment means dividing a particular image into different different segment with our choice. So first that must we must have. to define a model of the background why don't should be there this background model is compared against the current event that we have and then the known background are parts subtracted away means if we want to have a segmentation of a particular background with respect to image what we will do first of all we will find the model of the background means the background now that background is compared against the current image we will separate out it and then the known background which is we have already find it out that we will separate away from the image then we will get the image so the objects left after the subtraction of these pre assumedly that we can see that new foreground object with respect to that we have motion parallax so motion parallax refers to the fact that objects moving at a constant speed that is across the plane will appear to move a greater amount if they are closer to an observer observe means the camera that we are having it and then they would be if at a greater distance so motion parallax refers to the fact the object will move at a constant speed across the frame that we are taking it that will appear to a move that we are moving to a greater amount and if they are closer to the earth if it is not and it is a greater distance it is very difficult to track that object so this phenomenon is true whether it is object or whether it is the object itself that is moving we can say or the camera that is moving relative to the object so we have to base we based on the two two theories moving object or the moving camera the phenomenon is true so the reason for this effect has to do with the amount of distance the object moves as compared with the percentage of what the camera field of the view that it moves across so whenever we are talking about the parallax it is shown in the diagram as you can see here suppose we are having an example let's suppose an object that is 10 meter away that will move 20 meter in a certain direction and will only move across 25% of the field of view is it's 100 10 100 meter and we are taking 20 meter distance that means it is 25% yet the same 20% uh, 20 meter displacement is an object that is only 40 meter away field means we are taking an example if it is 40 meter away of the displacement that is 20 meter that is away will cause the object to move completely out of frame because whenever we are comparing with the object that is 40 meter with comparison with the 100 meter the object will go out of the bound if it is crosses the uh, boundary which is given as so visible motion and true motion is totally based on the concept where the optical flow correspond to the motion flow but not always so here we are going to study what is an optical flow is for example the motion field and the optical flow of a rotating barber's pole are different suppose barber pole is an example where z axis is been moved means with respect to z axis we are crossing the all the lines and we are taking its uh, reference how we are taking the z axis with respect to that the motion field is defined like the every uh, uh, value is been rotating around the uh, pole and how it is rotating in a circular way with respect to that whenever we are considering that in the terms of optical flow it is moving in from top to bottom to top so this is how the flow is and this is how the field is motion field so whenever we are comparing optical flow is a factor field from which the motion field can be estimated under some conditions now how that conditions are like we are having an image plane we are having an object 3d object point okay with respect to that we are having z f v i d t p and d now how with respect to that we are having a point p a and we are also having a v distance vector now r is the distance that is from the focal point that is lens focal point f okay it is given here with respect to the distance that we are calculating for a 3d point p okay we are calculating here with the p so r is what the focal point r okay uh, focal distance r okay the focal point is here which is defined here at the center point and r i is the point which from from the image plane to the focal point okay which is defined by p1 okay and this is how the image plane with respect to the f the distance between the lens and your image plane is defined by the focal length f 
and this is how the different parameters depend whenever we are taking a 3d point to our image plane with the velocity vector v okay and the unit vector z because z is merged as in unit vector along the z direction and this is how the velocity of the three of the image plane and the 3d space is will depend now with respect to that we can say the optical flow is equal to apparent motion of the same at the same intensity patterns or ideally we can say the optic flow can approximate projections of the three dimensional motion that is vectors into the image plane hence we can say the optical flow is estimated instead of the motion field that is later we can say that unobservable in general how it is defined like we are having a time t1 we are having a time t2 and how the optical flow with, uh, goes with respect to direction it is going in a circular form okay so like time t1 it is steady at time t2 it is somewhat rotated and in optical flow it is showing the how that direction is being moved okay so this is what we can say apparent motion of the same intensity pattern of the object this is what an optic flow flows now the aperture problem is defined in the same problem as like by analyzing the protected images that we have we always observe a limited area of visible motion that is only we can say defined by aperture of the camera aperture diameter we can say the uh, distance between the both of the center point and the object okay uh, and the, sorry the lens so this is what aperture of the camera is or we can say area of influences so what is the aperture problem so we can say aperture problem is with respect to distance how we are taking the point okay means how we are taking the point with a particular object in and frame okay frame is different so with respect to that what it is for example assume that we either only see the inner rectangles okay for example or the whole three image, images that is taken away here okay at times that t t plus 1 and t plus 2 for the inner rectangles that we have okay we may conclude an upward translation with a minor rotation means with respect to that how an image is being rotated with an image rotated and here minor rotation means with respect to see this is straight now somewhat in the second one it is somewhat here and in the third one as you can see it is somewhat up so this is how the rotation takes place okay here till here and how till here so with respect to the different angle of the motion of the lens the uh, aperture means the image capturing which is done is totally different so this is what we are unable to measure the component of the optical flow means at what direction and what is the uh, intensity of the image pixel that we are taking it in an optical flow that is the direction of the intensity gradient so we can say we are unable to measure the component that is tangential to the intensity gradient so for that here the motion like as for example this is a motion form where different motion is being defined in a circular form a with respect to b the direction of the intensity gradient is been defined now how it is changing that is totally dependent on the angle and the parameter which is taking with an flow okay so the optical flow is defined like we are having the points as for example p1 p2 p3 p4 it has been optical flow it is given with t plus 1 how it goes see the points goes up 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 means it is totally rotated now with respect to that if we are taking like image tracking how we will be the tracking of the image see the image sequence which is defined here and the tracked sequence which is defined with respect to each and every parameter the location will be find it out so this is what image tracking and this is what optical flow is with respect to points which is defined p1 p2 p3 and p4 so here target features are tracked over time and the uh, movement is converted into velocity vectors so lower panel show as a single image of the half way left and the flow vectors as the camera moves it shows the hall okay so what is an uh, optical flow what the common assumption we have brightness constant constancy so the appearance of the image patches do not change brightness constant what is the equation i of pi into t pi of t is equals to i of pi plus velocity vector vi okay or comma t plus 1 so this is what a pixel we can say pi from the image of an object in the scene does not change in appearance as it moves from frame to frame it will not change if it is moving in the same direction with the same pattern but for a grayscale image like for example this means if we assume that the brightness of a pixel does not change it is tracked from frame to frame so how this brightness constancy uh, constancy is defined like we are having a pixel for a particular pixel and we are taking it in the particular direction in the same form so it will not change assumption will remain same so we can say the image measurements that is if we are taking in a small region remain the same through their location may change but of course if you are changing the location and you are taking the aperture or we can say the size is in a region is very small it will not change 
okay means with the distance with the size it will not change if it is a smaller amount if it is a big amount or big region it will change so this is what an optical flow assumption is with respect to brightness constancy thank you here we are going to do the next topics in the next session thank you Thank you.